So, welcome to uh, Cross Sound Exotics HQ. It's pretty uh, pretty classy, I guess. Going to be doing a couple shows here today. I know, right? Well, let's go, Mortis. We got birthday parties in an hour. <laughs> you ready, Beto? Hurry up, get in your tub, dude. So, Mike, is there anything, like, prior to shows that, like, goes through your head? Like, do you get nervous still, or, like... I get nervous, excited, you know? Like, it's, every every show's a little different, all the kids are different, and you just kind of never know what you're gonna walk into sometimes. So, I mean, yeah, I guess you get excited like that. Um, and then just, I'm never on time, so I'm always kind of freaking out about running behind. Yeah, we're kind of late today. Yeah. But not that late. And it's so, always my fault, so. And it was kind of my fault. I didn't have anything ready, but I don't like to, so the way my alligator's set up is that he's in, he's got like a big concrete mixing tub of water and he splashes all around. And so I don't want to put my polo on because I don't want to smell like alligator water. So <laughs> I'm normally the last one to get changed because though he should probably be the first one to be put in a tub, um, I always leave him till last just because he's in water and it's cold out so again I don't want him to be in his tub the longest because you're cold already so you don't want to like I don't know make him compromised and possibly get him sick so uh, but that's why I do it last but yeah anytime like before shows I kind of think I hope the kids are well behaved because most of the times when doing educational like birthday parties it becomes like babysitting it happens quite a bit. It happens quite a bit. Parents just leave the kids in the room and they're like, good luck. Yeah. Have fun. So but sometimes it's fine. And then sometimes you just, you know, kids have had so much sugar that do, uh, throughout the birthday party. It's like, all right, guys, can we sit still for two minutes? Two minutes. Yeah. You know? And then it serves the purpose of party entertainment. But like as an educator, you're like, oh, man, I, there's got to be something more. Which is great because like a lot of times when we do libraries or schools or I don't know, other educational events, it's great. And some birthday parties are so tentative that like, you're like, man, that was really awesome. And you get a lot out of the experience because you feel like some people learn stuff and um, they're gonna go away from this, you know, kind of being better off on, you know, just learning about animals, having a great experience. But then there's other shows where it's literally just babysitting, the parents aren't, parenting and you're just like this sucks so I don't know hopefully uh, hopefully we'll have one of those shows where we're not babysitting but we'll see this is the way I have spoken and what these frogs do is they dig a hole underground and they make a mucus cocoon right which is like a snack cocoon it's not because he, he's got a convenient little pocket right here that common snappers don't. You got your picture? Because I'm like, my arm's getting tired. Sure. Okay, I'll take a video. I want to know if that That's like his nose part here. You can pat it like his chin, but if you put your fingers too close to where his, his mouth is, he's like, hey, are you feeding me? Because sometimes we'll hand feed him like bananas and like carrots, apples, whatever, but. Docile, easy going, but it's a snake that's going to take up some room. And she's still growing, so. Is it worse than a bee sting? Uh, I, I think in, in nature, these guys can get up to 18 feet. But like in captivity, they might get, you know, 18 feet. Never been over this way. We're in, uh, this is Bonifield, I think. Do you want to breed kitten lizards? I want, like, I'd like to. I just, one of those, I, I feel like if I put too much effort into it, it won't happen because I'll be, like, excited about it. It's like, for me, it's usually when it's not. When I don't plan it, and it just kind of happens, 
like kind of one of those like I'm putting a little effort but not like putting all my like eggs in one basket kind of thing and then I'm like oh cool I got lucky with this that's right. usually how most of my breeding goes right but also when have, when you have like big collections it's easy to I think it's a little bit easier to breed things like I've heard uh, like Kevin McCurley talk about this on his channel um, I think it was recently he said he was gonna be breeding crocodile monitors and he says he's not putting the as much attention into it as he should but sometimes that's sometimes that's like the best way to kind of go about things because like if you're just breeding like you we'll say like, box turtles yeah. and you're you're just strictly like box turtles but when you've got other animals and other projects to like take care of and to breed it seems like there's a lot of pressure that's mentally taken off because again the animals don't know you're trying to breed them you know what I mean? So it's like, yeah. you know, if you're just, just casually doing stuff like that, it's a lot easier. So I mean, with caiman lizards, I yeah, mean. Yeah, I mean, it's one of those, like, it seems like there's a lot of info, but not a lot of info at the same time. So I've been doing all right with Drax. I'm debating on getting uh, getting him a girlfriend and then, you know, several years, put them together and see if magic happens. Right. Like with the, I think it'd be cool to do the green anacondas, but at the same time, like, it's more along the lines of like, do we want to tie up a really good show animal like Nebula or Gamora? Um, then also too, that we're taking on one more animal because we don't have a male. Yeah. So we'd have to find a male green anaconda, uh, work with that animal. But then, on top of it, we've got to house all the baby green anacondas until they find home. So, it's kind of something where you have to think about, you know, yeah, it'd be cool to breed an animal. But at the same time, there's so much that goes into it. It's not like breeding, you know, something smaller like a corn snake or a milk snake that we do on a regular basis. Um, and I know they can be finicky eaters, you know. I mean, a lot of yeah, little snakes. But. Yeah. I mean, yeah, anacondas definitely are finicky eaters. So, I know with Gamora, we still, we're feeding Gamora uh, chicken legs for a majority of the time. Honestly, so we I got her in like 2014. And this year was the first year that she's actually taken rats. Rest of the time, I've literally been throwing her in pheasants, drumsticks from Jewel, like legit, just raw drumsticks from Jewel, uh, uh, or the grocery store, I'm sorry. And uh, yeah, and she's grown. I mean, she's around seven and a half, eight feet long now. Yeah, she's thick. And uh, she's a thick girl. But yeah, this is the first year that she's actually taken rodents, so. Yeah, but I think caiman lizards would be a cool thing to, to breed I, I've and also look thought into. about maybe trying to track down a female uh, for reptar. The um, albino iguana, or albino iguana. Dude, I just saw Ty Parks um, said he's going to be pairing up a exanthic or a blue iguana with one of his albino iguanas. I don't know what that I even makes. I think that's how you end up getting the solid white. Oh, cool. Because you get a double het baby where it's het for... Xanthic, which takes out your red and yellow, and then you have the albino, which takes out all the other colors other than red and yellow. So those babies, if they're bred back to one another, should produce a solid white animal. Hmm. I could be wrong on that. I, I, I thought I listened to a, a podcast with Crutchfield talking about it, but they didn't live very long. I don't. I don't know how that goes because I mean, I'm, sometimes uh, I would imagine sure. some of those, uh, you know, you inbreed too much and sure. you end up with. Uh, you know, some kind of uh, kinks in, in, in your plan. Yeah. I also thought, too, that um, there were that the albinos, like, when they're babies, they're beautiful because they're, like, canary yellow. But at the same time, I thought that they do tend to white out as adults. I know Reptar's color isn't as Yeah, Reptar isn't. used to be, like, again, canary yellow, and now yeah. he's, like, a he almost looks like he's sun faded. Like if you were to put like a slide out in the sun and have it out there for a couple years. Probably like ball pythons. You know how like they... Oh yeah, just, I get that. They look like their colors, I mean, just amazing. Some on some of these morphs as a baby and then they get older and you're like, I mean, it's cool, but it's not like it was when he was a baby. Right. I have to see what Yondu is because we do have a blue, we do have a blue iguana. Um, I don't know, maybe Yondu's a... Yandu's a male. Yeah. Obviously, uh, pig and elephant genes just don't splice. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, but yeah, that'd be cool if Yandu was a female. And then we paired them up. 
I think it would also be cool to track down frilly, like... Yeah, a male. Yeah, I think it'd be cool to get a frill blizzard. Those. There's a lot of cool projects out there, but you can't take that too much. And frilly's That's about done growing. Frilly's yeah. not growing much. I just... It's two, it's one. It's finding an animal that, one, meshes with what we're trying to do. Like, we can't really bring... We do frilly for, like, setup and displays, but frilled dragons... There are... There was a, a gentleman at... Uh, at the Herb Society, and he was also at the uh, the local reptile show. They used to have some really big. Those were Indonesian frilled dragons, right? Those weren't Australian. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't remember. I think that they were Indonesian uh, frilled dragons, and they recently passed away. But they were several years old. I mean, they were very impressive. But uh, they're just animals that like don't display well because they're one. I don't think they've been bred enough in captivity, but. Um, they're just animals that are like really timid and shy. Kind of flighty. They're flighty a little bit too. Really adorable when they start to run. Oh my god. I think that's really funny. Yeah. Because they run on their two back legs and they just kind of hop around. I think that's funny. But really be cool to breed. Um, just to, again, produce something that's not a bearded dragon. But once you get them like going and once you've like had them from babies, um, I believe the person that we got frilly from said that they're wasn't it a percentage Australian they said it was a percentage Australian but they're not 100% sure but I also yeah. don't know if that meant that it was captive bred maybe it's a first generation captive I mean if it's if it's if it's percentage Australian it's got to be captive bred because it's sure. yeah, yeah so who knows but I think it's just because there's a lot of red on its belly so we're really not sure what it Sometimes is. without like documentation, it's hard to prove this or that when you just buy, you know, an animal off somebody. True. So, who knows, but those type of projects would be fun just because, again, it's something new and um, one of a friend of ours was basically like, you know, he likes keeping things, but it's also like a bucket list to breed stuff. Um, and I think that's kind of cool because it is almost like a mastery level of or master's level of keeping something is having an animal comfortable enough and um, healthy enough to breed and you know producing those animals really does kind of give you credibility on um, how to keep these creatures you know like your Russian tortoises that was one right. that you've had forever right forever and, and then they finally just started laying eggs for you and also that's proof that when you just forget about animals and you just don't you know you do what you're supposed to do but you're not counting on it it doesn't like it makes it a lot easier to produce them because again i had been trying since 2012 2013 yeah. to breed those animals because at first they were creatures that we would get that you wouldn't have like um people would just give them to you because you're the reptile guy and they're like hey you know jimmy like or one pet tour right you know you know, or a daughter or whatever, you know, just kind of lost interest. So I'm like, all right, you know, I'll keep these animals. And so at one point, I think I had around like 12 of them. Um, and I would just keep them together. The males, males are actually pretty good. Males aren't too, uh, too ornery around each other. And they, they kind of have their little hierarchies. Um, so I don't see too much fighting or combating between the tortoises. But um, yeah, that last year was the first successful year that I had Russian tortoise, viable Russian tortoise eggs. Um, and it's because I cooled them down, um, warmed them back up, and then produced them. And now I've got, you know, four little babies I'm raising up, so, which is cool. But again, I think that's kind of a testament to, yeah, you know, maybe just raise up a female caiman lizard and then, you know, see what happens when, when it happens. Yeah, it's kind of the, uh, the idea I've been tossing around. It's just one of those are not a cheap lizard, so. No. Yeah. But it would be nice too yeah. to have, and that, and this is the other thing too. Um, like I was saying with the green anacondas, you want to make sure that one, the animal that you have, uh, the other, the, the 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 other gender of the animal that you have, you want to make sure that two, we can switch that animal off. So like, Drax would obviously be the main animal that we would use, but we would try to use the female came lizard as well yeah. because if we're using Drax in our shows, we want to have an animal that we can switch out so that. If Drax has been used for a show, we want to switch out and use the female. Um, and, you know, and obviously vice versa. Because when you do a lot of shows, it can be stressful. And it depends on individuals as well. But 
Same thing with the green anaconda. We've gotten super, super lucky that our green anacondas have been as puppy dog tame as they've been. Um, not knowing whether or not they've been captive bred or not. Um, but ours are fantastic. So again, bringing in a male, I would just want to make sure that that male is something that we can utilize. And it's not just utilized for breeding. Because again, um, having collections as big as we do, you want to make sure that you optimize the amount of um, things that you can utilize those animals for. Because they are our pets, but at the same time, you want to make sure that you know, you they're only, not just tied up into one specific You only have avenue. so much time in the day to take care of everybody, you know? You don't want to end up with all these animals and you're not enjoying everything because you're just busy changing out waters and right. petting. And, and that's true. You're right. I mean, if you're just changing that animal's water and you can't interact with it, um, again, you can have animals that, you know, you work with, like, you know, the rhino iguana that was super nasty when I got it. But it's just because it was scared. It wasn't because it was mean, but working with it... Um, more and more, I mean, Kumba does shows all the time now, but I, not being someone that's like tamed snakes down a lot in the past, you'd want to get a snake with a, a with a great disposition right off the bat. You know what I mean? Like just a yeah. good maybe and stuff. Um, if they're older, I honestly, I think it's a lot harder to get a older snake tolerant of handing an interaction than it would be for a baby. Like right now that uh, I have a baby ivory berm and this thing, when you first get out of the cage, it is mouth open and just trying like gaping at you, trying to like attack you. But once you get it out for a second, he's kind of relaxed and then you're good. But when you've got an animal that's like two, three, four years old or older, yeah. that animal's already set in its ways. Um, a lot of times with babies, when they act like that. We're gonna be pulling up to our show in five minutes oh, or less. Cool. But when they act like that, um, those animals are just doing that because again, they're new to the world and they don't really understand what's going on. So when you can kind of give them a better understanding that these, you know, big giant apes that are trying to handle them and interact with them are not trying to eat them, you know, you end up getting a better animal. You want to know something funny in my normal job? I'm actually an exterminator. So Is that a white heart? Only if you have a blue shirt on. <laughs> you do, you do. I'm joking. You're just... Did you touch him? Only if you have black pants. No. It's cold? It's very cold. Yes, we got to get everybody put away. We do. Who's that? That's Vito. I was probably going to put my hands Ugh. Mostly because I can't reach Vito's cage. That's so true. Well, I don't know if this is a success or not, but I think the great stuff that we put on that lid worked. Yeah, she didn't rub her face at all. She didn't rub her face. So, what we did here is, Miss Allie here is infamous for pushing her face up against the tub. So, what we did was we put great stuff on the lining here because on the ones, let me show you this one here. On the ones in here, she can get her face up between this lip and she actually scuffs her face up, okay? So, hopefully, going forward, uh, we won't actually have that problem. So, overall, I think it was a good day. Very good day, yeah. Yeah. So, we'll get you put away, and, uh, we'll see you next time.